It's been an eventful year for games. There's been a lot of shocking twists and even more shocking moments. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on GameRank's 10 Holy Shit Gaming Moments of the last one year. Fair warning, we're talking about some of the most surprising stuff from the past year, so there's spoilers. Starting off at number 10, from Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Rope Man taking you to the Fountainhead Palace. Sekiro is, for most of the game, fairly straightforward compared to their whacked out monstrosities you end up fighting another From Software game, so it's pretty damn shocking when this happens. So to reach the Fountainhead Palace, you've got to get this palanquin and pray. That's when this giant uh, rope guy, there's really no other term for him. He grabs you and he just takes you up to the palace. Remember, the weirdest thing we've seen so far in this game is a ghost. So giant rope man appearing out of nowhere to help you out is pretty shocking. From this point on, the game gets a lot stranger, but nothing really beats the holy shit of this particular moment. What's extra weird about it is that you don't fight it, you never see it again, and it never speaks or does anything else for you or to you. It's just one crazy moment near the end of the game, leaving you scratching your head in total confusion. Oh, and apparently it's supposed to be a Shimanawa, or sacred rope used in the Shinto shrines, but you know, those are just ropes, not like giants who pick you up. So, mystery solved, I guess. Not really. Moving on to number 9, Call of Duty Modern Warfare's hometown level. The reboot of Modern Warfare is a game that sold itself on shocking moments and yeah, there's a lot of them, no denying that. Between storming a home filled with terrorists, watching gas attacks, and seeing people be mercilessly executed, the game really just never lets up. Probably the most shocking moment of them all is when you play as a young Farah, reliving the day when she became a freedom fighter. After escaping a gas attack, Farah, who's a very small child in this section, watches a soldier kill her father, then attempt to abduct her and her brother. Game over, super! <laughs> From that point, it's a nerve-wracking game of cat and mouse as you fight off this big burly monster as a little girl using sharp objects that you find around the house. The sequence will be bad enough, but after fighting him off, you have to hide among dead bodies and you even pick up a gun you can barely hold to kill in cold blood in order to steal a truck. It is a roller coaster of shocking stuff. Basically, the whole level is this big holy shit moment. At number eight, the end at Fortnite. It feels a little strange putting a battle royale shooter on this list, but the end event in Fortnite was so big and so surprising that we really couldn't in good conscience leave it off. Fortnite had toyed with some timed events before this one, like that marshmallow concert or the volcano exploding, but this time they wanted to do something big, not just change the map around a little, but do something extremely drastic and woof. They did. On October 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the rocket in Dusty Depot launched and flew into a rift in the sky. That's when the rockets went crazy, flying around the map and creating rifts all over the place. Then a giant explosion launched everyone into the sky, stuck in a floating state before the final meteor came crashing down, creating a black hole and sucking up the entire map. The game was just a black screen until October 15th, several days when the black hole exploded and revealed an entirely new map. You are not able to play the game between October 13th and 15th, which is absolutely wild for a live services game to do. You just get a blank screen though if you tried to log in. The whole thing was nuts. Probably the most impressive and surprising bit of persistent storytelling in an online game that doesn't really attempt storytelling for the most part, and was a huge holy shit moment of last year. At number seven, Gears 5 when you get to control the swarm. Gears 5 was kind of a game full of small surprises, but surprises nonetheless. These open world sections, the return to Mount Kate are from Gears 2, but probably the most shocking moment in the game is where you, playing as Kate, suddenly find yourself controlling the swarm forces after getting captured by a snatcher. Again. 
A voice tells you to kill the colonists you're trying to protect, but thankfully you can have the swarm fight each other rather than your buddies. Bros before bugs, right? It's awesome you get some control of the monsters you've been basically fighting for six games, even if it ends with the death of another one of Kate's friends. Even crazier, nothing like this happens again in Gears 5. There's more visions, but this is the only part in the entire series you get direct control of the swarm, and it is a hell of a surprise when you do. And number six, actually not terribly different in Plague Tale, which is granted an extremely different game, but controlling the rats, because the rats are basically their own kind of swarm. The game itself actually does have a very large number of surprising twists and turns. It does seem like a pretty straightforward story at the beginning, you know, about the plague. And then it turns into a hellish story with infinitely spawning monster rat swarms. The game is just chock full of violence and death, and these rats are the cause of most of it. But at a certain point in the story, you find that Hugo, the kid you're protecting, who has a mysterious illness, isn't just immune to the plague, he can actually control the rat swarms. This completely changes the nature of the game. Instead of being afraid of the rats, you can just use them against the Inquisitors who spend the entire game hunting you. You go from being incredibly weak and almost defenseless to being basically unstoppable. Just watching these rats swarm one of these poor bastards is enough to elicit a holy shit on its own. But it's also one of the craziest and coolest twists in a narrative-driven game this year. Let's go. I wish I was strong like that. Mate, you have an army of rats. And at number five, in the Resident Evil 2 remake, escaping from the orphanage is Sherry. In an entirely new section created for the remake, you're put in Sherry's shoes and you have to escape the psychotic Chief Irons who's got you locked up in this creepy abandoned orphanage. This whole section is tense as hell as you narrowly avoid getting grabbed by this greasy creeper in some pretty tight escape sequences. Seriously, no one's getting through this part without getting caught at least once, and it's not fun when you do. Manage to get down to the office and you'll see another of the Chief's victims before he meets his end by the hands of surprise William Birkin. I didn't even mention the part where irons get splashed in the face with acid. The whole part is one of the creepiest elements of the game, and it's new. It's chock full of holy shit moments. Are you serious? Moving on to number four, it's Control. That fake out ending is a holy shit moment. Okay, so in Control, your final mission is to reach the Hedron Chamber and free Polaris, this otherworldly being who's been guiding you throughout the game. Doing this is supposed to free everyone from the Hiss, another otherworldly thing that's infecting people and making them crazed killers. A normal day, right? This is all super truncated because Control is wild and complicated, and that's basically what's going on. So you fight your way through wave after wave of hiss to free Polaris. When you open the containment chamber, you find out the Polaris is actually already dead. I was wrong. There was never anything there. The bizarre cutscene happens where I guess you get infected happens and then credits. That's it. I mean, that would be holy shit worthy enough because what the hell? Really? There's more though. The text of the credits starts smearing and blending together and you wake up and you find yourself in an office job where you're doing menial tasks and to say the least, something is off about the whole thing. Of course, it's a vision or something that you eventually break out of, but that whole sequence of events is so crazy, it's gotta go on this list. And at number three, the last two hours of Death Stranding. I don't even know how to sum it up quickly, so let's go. Death Stranding is a kind of slow game and it really takes its time to dull out the usual Kojima crazy stuff. It's weird, but man, the entire ending is such a long sequence of holy shit moments. I'm ready, Sam Strand. Make your choice. But wait, I don't know what to do. From the confrontation with Amelie at the end of the world, to the bizarre end credit sequence where you're blue for some reason, you wander around for a very long time, all the way down to Die Hardman's emotional breakdown, followed by that cliff flashback. Freeze! Hey, put it down! Drop it! Put it down! My love. Where he dies, but also talks to Sam, because he's actually your father. My son. My bridge to the future. And the ultimate resolution, where BB comes back to life, it's just 
absolutely insane and also awesome. I don't know how they managed to make something that is so brazenly incoherent be so emotionally satisfying, but they did. Even if you're a longtime Kojima fan, you know there's going to be some surprising, a lot of this stuff will have you shouting holy shit at the screen, if only because of the sheer audacity of the weirdness and yet sincerity of this game. Moving on to number two, a couple of moments from Devil May Cry 5. We can't talk about shocking moments without bringing this up from Devil May Cry 5. The moment where Dante is giving the Dr. Faust devil arm by Nico and, well, it just has to be seen to be believed. Yeah, he takes the hat and does a Michael Jackson dance in the scene that goes on just long enough to be absolutely hilarious. It's not exactly shocking in a like frightening or surprising way. It's just like a lot of other moments in the series, totally hilarious and insane. Probably the most memorable moment in the game with a lot of very memorable moments to be frank. And a quick mention of the secret ending, which gives a nice little epilogue where they reach a standstill, team up to fight some demons, and Dante gets to burst out his goofy catchphrase, jackpot one more time. It's goofy, it's awesome, and it's just cool to see. Don't you dare say it, jackpot! And finally, at number one, is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, you know what I'm gonna say if you've played the game, when Darth Vader shows up. I mean, you kinda knew it was gonna happen, but they just pulled it off so well, you're just like, yep, that's what I came here for. Like, this is one of those things that's not that surprising, but totally is, because Jedi Fallen Order took their sweet time to reveal Darth Vader. You play the entire game expecting a cameo from this guy at some point, but only after defeating the second sister does Darth Vader make his surprise appearance. I failed you. And I am so very sorry. I've carried so much hate for you. They do it with a slow close-up on your defeated enemy as she suddenly realizes she's being force choked. That doesn't look good. And it's just this really cool escape sequence. You barely escape with your life from the Dark Lord of the Sith. I mean, the dude just completely owns you the entire time. It almost plays out like a horror movie sequence. You're so outmatched. Come on! Gee, stay back! It's basically luck you manage to escape, and it's an altogether just awesome sequence that Maybe doesn't shock or surprise you directly, but does definitely cause the jaw to drop and maybe a holy shit to come out of your mouth. Couple of quick bonus points to you. From Kingdom Hearts 3, Sully. This part in Kingdom Hearts 3 is just hilarious. The brooding bad guys completely undercut by the Monsters Incorporated. Silly little cartoon antics. Hold it, quick! <laughs> 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 And it's probably the most hilarious moment in the game, if only because of how sudden it is. If you're like us and you're getting tired of the Reborn Organization 13's constant monologuing about hearts and darkness, then you loved this part. It's nice to know they're not taking this stuff too seriously. Next is Borderlands 3, Lilith getting her power stolen. Just as you're about to launch Sanctuary 3 and leave Pandora, something pretty major happens. Lilith, the leader of the Crimson Raiders and a character that's been in the game since the beginning, gets her powers brutally stolen by the Calypso twins before being humiliated on their live broadcasts. It's a pretty dark moment for what's usually a pretty silly series, and it lets you know that the bad guys of the game are not pushovers, they're real assholes. Finally, and this is a good one, in Day is Gone. We mentioned this on a previous list, but when you found that guy who's been wearing a biohazard suit the entire time, when you find out he wasn't just looking for a cure to the zombie plague, but actually some kind of super zombie himself. You remember I told you the infected were evolving? Right, yeah, freaks are freak. What the hell do I care? <laughs> yeah. 
it's a pretty huge shock for what's a pretty grounded game up to that point. And let me just go ahead and say, got all of us here very curious for a sequel. What was your favorite absolutely holy shit moment from 2019? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. So click subscribe and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero and we will see you next time right here on GameRanks.